morning, everyone. I thought I have a very dry speech today. And of course, I got inspired because former President Bush passed away two weeks ago, and he was pretty important in the wall coming down. However, yesterday, we had a showdown in the White House, and our current president, Trump, said that we need the wall. Without the wall, there is no border security. Being from Germany, and having the experience of the Berlin Wall today, my story is that I do not believe that walls are a good solution, and they actually are a history of failure. <laughs> the first time I saw the Berlin Wall was in 1977. I was 11 years old, and my family visited an aunt who lived in East Berlin, still lives in Berlin to this day. and. The one thing I remember, besides seeing this big wall and the barbed wire, was going to the checkpoint. <coughs> and there weren't many cars in front of us, only two, and we sat first for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour, one hour. After about an hour, they came out to collect our passports. Two guys, machine guns, pretty intimidating, grabbed the passports, went back in the house, and then we said again, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, when they finally came back to hand us our papers back, started asking questions, and then started to search the car. They had us come out, and they literally opened everything you can open in a car to see if we bring anything to East Germany. It's pretty intimidating. Clearly not a friendly place. <laughs> the Berlin Wall is a product of the Cold War. After World War II, Germany was divided into four sectors. Berlin lies in the, or did lie in the Russian sector and had a special status being the capital of Germany. Was also divided into four sectors. And at first, Berlin was a normal city. Life was intertwined. People had family in different parts. They could move around freely. They went to work still in different sectors. I remember my second time when I went to Berlin as a student in 1982, taking the subway from the southern part to the northern part. And the subway, of course, didn't follow any sector lines. So we got on, it was just fine. And then we entered the eastern part, came to a station in the eastern part, and we were not allowed to go out. There were guards standing again, heavily armed, and you saw East Berliners go on other trains, and we all stared at each other, and it was the creepiest subway ride I ever did. However, while that lasted between 1949 and 1961, the problem was that in that time frame, three million East Germans defected to West Berlin, which of course was not liked by the East Berlin. East German government, and they started talking about a solution. Their solution was that all the other Allied forces, the Americans, the French, and the British, would leave, and we make Berlin a free city. Of course, everybody knew that that was a ploy to eventually take Berlin into their Russian sector, into East Germany. And in June of 1961, Walter Obrecht, the former, former head of East Germany, said, nobody has any intention of building a wall, and nobody had ever talked about the wall, so people got very suspicious. And indeed, two months later, in order to stop the stream of East Germans leaving their country, to keep them inside, overnight, from August, August 12th to August 13th, 1961, they built a wall, 155 kilometers in the middle through Berlin and all the way around Berlin so that nobody could get out anymore. Now here's a few pictures. This is a picture of uh, Potsdam Place, which was the busiest place in the 1920s and 30s, busier than Times Square. And you see the wall and you see the space behind it because whenever they could, when there were no buildings, they cleared the space behind it to have the death strip, 50 meters, 100 meters, and of course, guards had the order to shoot first. Don't ask questions. Second picture is from the day they built the wall. A soldier 
jumping over the barbed wire fence because he realized it was his last chance to get out. <laughs> over the course of the next 28 years, from 1961 to 1989, about official number is 140 people, 144 people were shot in Berlin. There is the assumption that there is a dark number that is a little bit higher, roughly 300. But did the wall work? Did it keep people inside? No, it didn't. During those 28 years, 5,000 people escaped <coughs> by jumping out of windows, climbing over barbed wire, by going underneath through the sewer system. Have you seen the movie Shawshank Redemption? Think of that. By simply driving through checkpoints, and the most famous one is, of course, a family that built, not in Berlin, that was from Germany to Germany, a hot air balloon themselves, and escaped in 1979 by flying a balloon. This is the family. There was a movie in 1982 I can only recommend. It is called Night Crossing. It's quite a long process to build the balloon. It took them two years. And the tricky thing is the wind in Europe usually blows from west to east. So they had to time it right that the balloon actually <laughs> flew the right direction. It's a really fascinating story. In the 80s, of course, things changed thanks to the Russian government changing to a strong military presence on the western side. We all remember Ronald Reagan saying in 1987, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. On the other hand, Harry Honecker, the leader of East Germany, believed this wall in January of 1989, just 10 months before it came down, he said, this wall will last 100 years. Quite fascinating, the misjudgment. But in 1989, the German people on the eastern side became fed up. They started daring, inspired by the development, political developments, to go out. Every Monday night, they started demonstrating. First a few hundred, then a few thousand in the end. Millions every Monday night. And by October 1989, the wall was opened and came down and became a big party. The Berlin Wall is not the only wall in Germany. We have many, many castles from our history. We have castles that were built in the 11th century. century. The wall is about one meter thick. In the 13th century, the castles have walls that are three meters thick. If you go to the Heidelberg Castle built in the 17th century, the walls are seven meters thick. I could lay down three times. They have all one thing in common. They all were breached. They all came down. And they only became obsolete when Germany became Germany in 1871. Nobody needed castles anymore. I do believe that we can do the same worldwide. We don't need walls because they are only a temporary solution. Ronald Reagan in his speech agreed with me. Yes, across Europe the wall will fall, for it cannot withstand faith. It cannot withstand the truth. The wall cannot withstand freedom. And even our current president believes that because he tweeted 2013, October 7th, we built too many walls and not enough bridges. And I hope we all do our part by not supporting any walls. The first mural on the Berlin Wall, I want to close with that, is it little saying, many small people in many small places do many small things to change the face of the world. We don't need to build walls. We need to be kind to another and work for United Religion.